Hi all and welcome back to my channel. My name is Davis and on this channel we cover all things tech. And today we are taking a look at what's been one of the most fun smartphones I've ever used. Now I've used plenty of amazing and weird phones from ones with keyboards on them to those with smart watches on the back and even phones with um, earphones in them. But never have I used a phone that's filled me with as much joy as this one. This is the 8849 3 Pro made by Unihertz and it's by far the most insane wonderful phone I have ever used. The amount of features on the Tank 3 Pro puts every other phone to shame and that's because it's not Pro for professional but Pro for projector. Yes, because thanks to popular demand, they have brought back the projector from the Tank 2 phone after having replaced it with a laser pointer in the standard Tank 3. And for the first time ever on a phone, the projector is actually usable. It is actually shockingly good. So if you've dismissed the idea of a projector on a phone after having used the Tank 2 or any of the Samsung Beam phones, then this is a bit of a game changer. But of course, the Tank 3 Pro is is not just about the projector. In fact, the number of weird and insane features on this phone makes it just about the most interesting phone I have ever used. And we'll get through all of these features just after this break. And this video is brought to you by the Ultra Human Ring Air. Do you want the ultimate health tracking tool that will allow you to wear a normal watch? Well, the Ultra Human Ring Air is just that gadget. While it looks like a normal ring and weighs as little as 2.4 grams, not only can it track your heart rate, blood oxygen saturation, sleep and fitness, but it makes all of that information super easy to understand. As you can see, I did not get much sleep last night, but my recovery score is okay. If you use my code in the description, which is Davis10, you can save 10% and begin your health journey today. So let's get back to the phone. What is new with the Tank 3 Pro? Well, luckily it's based on the standard Tank 3 phone, and that's pretty good because it means that it's one of the highest specified tough phones that you can buy. On the front, there is a 6.8 inch full HD LCD display that refreshes at 120 hertz. And there's a tiny little hole punch cutout at the top. While it's not one of the most gorgeous screens I've ever seen, uh, it is pretty serviceable and does get decently bright at around 700 nits, but it isn't outstanding. However, attached to the screen, we have one of the toughest feeling bodies I have ever felt. And because of that, it's heavy. In fact, it's even heavier than the original Tank 3, which weighed 666 grams. And that's probably because they've replaced the carbon fiber like finish over here with what looks like elephant skin and elephant skin is heavy because somehow the new phone has gained 30 grams over the old one yep it weighs 696 grams which is absolutely insane but apart from the elephant skin at least it's got the same mix of metal rubber and also glass, which means that it just feels really, really incredibly good quality. However, as it weighs over one and a half pounds, even if you could fit this three centimeter thick behemoth in your pocket, I think that your trousers are definitely going to get pulled down and you will expose yourself in front of children. So you have been warned. However, because this phone is so large and heavy, it's also got one of the largest batteries you can find on a phone at 23,800 milliamps. That is larger than most power bakes and that means that not only will you get close to a week's worth of battery life but you can also use it as a power bank to charge other devices too at up to 10 watts I believe but you probably wouldn't want to um, charge other tank phones probably. But of course it's not just the size and battery that makes a tank phone because let me show you some of the other iconic hardware features. So on the top obviously we do have the 480p projector that goes up to a very respectable 100 lumens and while that is lower resolution than the Tank 2 it actually looks sharper to me and that's because you can change the focus manually and it is a lot brighter than the 40 or so lumens of the Tank 2. And next to the projector it's quite hard to see but we've still got a little infrared blaster so you can pretend to be a TV remote and we've also got a vent that leads to a fan and that basically cools the projector. And 
despite the active cooling, um, it's still IP68 dust and water resistant, which is pretty amazing. But I'm just going to hazard a guess and say that it's not quite as resistant as the um, older phones. On the right side, we do have another vent for cooling, which is very nice. And we've got the power button, which also doubles as a figure print reader. And like on all tank phones, that works pretty well. On the other side though, it is rather busy now. I mean, just compared to the older Tank 3 phone, it's got so many more buttons now. Because not only do we have the dual SIM SIM card slot that we don't need a um, SIM tool to eject, uh, but that also contains a micro SD card slot that accepts up to an additional two terabytes of space. That's incredible. Um, we've also got volume buttons a little bit lower down than before over here. And um, they're made of pretty high quality um, metal. And underneath that, we also have the two action buttons. And um, the red one by default, if you hold it down, does turn on the camp light. I'll get into that in a bit. And the other one I've currently got set to controlling the silence mode of the phone. But of course, you can choose other options too. And over here, of course, we do have have this new wheel that allows you to adjust the focus of the projector manually and that is just very very nice to have on the bottom of the phone we still got the hook thing that you can uh, probably attach this phone to a, a very strong lanyard or something and under this slot over here, we've got the USB-C port that supports up to 120 watts of power, which is insane. But it's also kind of necessary for a phone like this. And of course, we've also got a headphone jack. And I've said this before, but it is still quite inconvenient having to uh, undo the flap every time I want to charge the phone. But at least you don't have to do it especially often. Um, on the bottom as well, we've still got one of the world's loudest speakers that I've ever heard heard on a phone. I mean, let's just do a quick comparison here. So the iPhone, as we know, has one of the best speakers of any phone. And let's see how loud that goes. So that's pretty loud. But let's see how loud the tank phone is. That's definitely a little bit louder. In fact, it goes all the way up to 105 decibels. And honestly, this little speaker over here is louder than most laptops I've tested. But as with all tank phones, unfortunately, it's not located in the best place. Um, in fact, it's way too easy to cover. And it's also not a stereo setup either. And the actual sound quality still is not as good as an iPhone speaker. But I would say it's pretty comparable to the S24 Ultra. But of course, it is a lot louder. Louder. And finally, we can talk about the camp lights, which is quite possibly one of my favorite features. Like with the Tank 3, we've only got the one unit here, unlike the two camp lights of the uh, Tank 2. I believe that's around a thousand lumens in brightness. And as you can see, it is extremely bright. It's so useful for using it as a uh, makeshift filming light or even just as a very bright torch. It's really useful. Less useful, however, are the police slash warning lights. I mean, who the hell could actually use that? But at least you can make them um, not flash. You can have them on like normal, creating a, a purple light, or you can have them on um, individually. Isn't that fun? And can you believe that we still haven't gone through all of the special features of this phone? Because beside the triple camera array um, of the usual 50 megapixel ultra wide, 200 megapixel main camera, and also 8 megapixel telephoto camera, there is also a 64 megapixel night vision camera, and it actually works pretty well. As we can see, there are four IR blasters over here that's illuminating the scene. I'm not sure when you'd use that in real life, but it is tremendous fun. Okay. So we've taken a look at the hardware design, which looks ridiculous, but also very cool. But what is the phone actually like to use? Because this is where most tank phones in the past have fallen down. While tank phones in the past have had all the features, the overall user experience, whether that was because of poor performance, iffy optimization, or a significant amount of bugs and glitches, well, it always felt like it left a lot to be desired. And I'm glad to say that apart from some very minor bugs, this phone has been 
absolutely amazing to use. And this is also a prototype example. Firstly, the performance is absolutely wicked. It genuinely feels so fast and fluid to use in day-to-day -day use. While the screen isn't the most gorgeous screen in the world, as it is just an LCD, it is still a decent looking LCD panel. But that's not what's important here, because what is important is the buttery smooth 120 hertz. And when teamed up with the Dimensity 8200 chip and 16 gigabytes of RAM, performance really is fairly faultless. On Geekbench, I got a CPU single core score of 1231 and a multi-score of 3855. And while that's roughly half the speed of an iPhone 15 Pro Max, that is actually rather difficult to discern in everyday use, as the phone does everything I ask for it with absolute ease. On this phone, I'm able to run as many apps as I want, and I can multitask with no problem whatsoever. So I'm going to multitask Twitter and let's say Instagram, and I'm playing a YouTube video. And unlike a lot of Android phones I've used in the past, there is no lag. It's fantastic. But of course, not everything is perfect. Like with all 8849 slash Unihertz devices, they always seem to launch with an OS version behind. And this one is running Android 13. And while that is fine for now, what is less impressive is that they rarely update these phones. For instance, my um, Titan Slim is still on Android 11 and it's crying for a any sort of OS update or worse yet a security patch and that I'm afraid does limit the lifespans of these devices even though Android 13 runs really well on this phone and the skin is really minimal and it basically looks and feels like standard Android even down to this control panel thing. The only real additions to Android, apart from the parts that control the hardware features, like the projector, like the camp lights, is the Toolbox app. Like with other Unihertz and 8849 phones, it provides you with a bunch of tools, like, um, I think this is new actually, um, a decibelometer. We've got a compass. We've got a flashlight that um, turns on just the little LED lights for some reason. And this is the area where you can access the camp light and also the warning lights that we saw earlier. What I did find surprising though, when considering the relatively unimpressive GPU score of um, 4300 OpenCL, um, was the gaming performance, because often with MediaTek chips, games just aren't very well optimized for some reason. For example, if you want to play titles like Grid Autosport, the frame rates and graphics don't look nearly as good as what you might find find on let's say an iPhone. Asphalt 9 does look better and it actually plays really really smoothly but of course an iPhone still looks better. For emulation though this phone is absolutely insane. In fact, I'm shocked by how well it plays titles like Gran Turismo 4. There's only a hint of slowdown on some challenging courses. There's also very little additional slowdown even after extended gameplay due to thermal throttling. And that might be because the cooling of this phone is pretty good because it's so large. And also, let's not forget the active cooling that actually doesn't really turn on during gameplay unless you've got the projector on. Despite that, I could never really get this phone to become seriously warm to the touch, unlike an iPhone even when I'm running the projector and games at the same time. Um, unfortunately though, if you are wondering, this phone is way too large to use something like a Razer Kishi or a Backbone controller, but it would just be perfect for that. And let's talk about glitches, because I feel like that there are actually barely any, apart from a little bit of jankiness when you start the projector. For instance, I've got the uh, projector um, a widget over here. The screen turns black, and then do you read that? The typo from the Tank 2 is still adorably here. Please never change 8849. I'm really glad to say that um, on this phone at least, I didn't experience any of the weird random restarts and also camera glitches that I've experienced with some previous models. The camera app especially is so much improved and I can finally flick through all of the uh, camera lenses very quickly with no crashes whatsoever. So well done Unihertz for uh, fixing that particular problem of the pre-production Tank 3 that I had. And for those who are asking why I didn't test the camera patch on the original Tank 3? Well, it's because these pre-production units um, that we receive for review don't actually get the same patches and upgrades that the production units do. And uh, the only way to install them is through flashing, which is simply not something that I've got time for when there's a million other things that I need to review. Anyway, speaking of the cameras, the cameras for the longest time have not been a strong point for the Unihertz tank line. 
On the first one, I believe that it had a 108 megapixel main unit and it had some very odd artifacting when you look closely at the images and it had a very useless 2 megapixel macro camera as well. The second version replaced the 108 megapixel main camera with an updated unit that was a lot better and it also introduced a 16 megapixel wide camera which while wasn't amazing was far more useful than the 2 megapixel macro camera and the Tank 3 promised to take the Tank cameras to the next level but there were problems with the review units at least and the main sensor was a very impressive 200 megapixel unit but the colors that it would take were absolutely hideous uh, the color temperature would be so severely off that it just encouraged me to download Gcam and um, to solve them and while there was a wide camera and a telephoto unit now um, there wasn't really any point in uh, switching to them uh, simply switching between cameras would often crash the app or just make the exposure either way too bright or way too dark and the camera hardware of the Tank 3 Pro is actually identical to the standard 3 but luckily all the problems have been fixed so we can review the cameras properly let's talk about the front camera first <laughs> So it's a 50 megapixel unit that's fixed focus and I've got to admit that um, it is not especially good. Colors still look a little bit odd and there's an odd washed out appearance but um, it really isn't all that bad. Um, what's more interesting though is the main camera. It's still a decently large um, a 1 in 1.4 inches in size and the lens is actually quite bright at f1.65 which means that there is potential to get some decent um, shallow depth of field for a phone at least. And obviously while you aren't actually resolving 200 megapixels of detail even in the high resolution mode, the detail that you can get in decent light does actually match that of the iPhone 15 Pro Max which I would say is fairly decent. Um, the shot to shot performance of the camera as well is also very brisk even if you've got HDR on. And also I didn't find the colors to be that egregious on this particular phone. Well I didn't love them as there still appears to be a little bit of an odd greeny yellow hue to the images but overall the colors are just a massive improvement over the older phone pre-update. So I would say that the camera definitely is not a reason to avoid this phone anymore. The wide camera on the other hand which is a 50 megapixel unit does not get especially wide when compared to other phones. I mean look at the wide camera here and we'll compare it with the one of the iPhone. The iPhone appears far wider. And while it isn't completely awful, I find that this camera doesn't look nearly as good as compared to the main sensor. And the telephoto camera, which is advertised at 3.4 times zoom, is just um, awful, I'm afraid. It's an 8 megapixel unit and images just look pretty poor overall. I would say that it's usable at a pinch. And the video, luckily, I would say is actually fairly impressive on this phone. It shoots 4K now, unlike the original Tank and the Tank 2. And the focus actually works pretty well. And, and when you turn the electronic image stabilization on which is not on by default by the way while it isn't great compared to a flagship phone the stabilization and exposure changes are relatively smooth and not too shabby at all one fun thing though is that you can actually use the thousand lumen torch as a very bright camera flash um, as you can enable by this um, particular button over here unfortunately though that does not work in video mode as if you press that button um, you just get this little puny torch instead um, that is rather disappointing this is completely useless um, as compared to the big camp light and now we come to the fun one the night vision camera so to enable it you just go into the more section and then you press um, infrared and there we go. So it's a 64 megapixel infrared camera with four IR lights on the back to light the scene. And honestly, this thing is so much fun to use. In the past, I found that the night vision cameras were a little bit glitchy and with very slow autofocus, but this seems to work pretty great. And the, and the stabilization actually works relatively well. I imagine that you can use this camera to film a high school remake of the Blair Witch Project or uh, something like that. I think it is tremendously fun. And now finally we come to the main feature of this camera, the projector. Now projectors on phones in the past have been fun but somewhat useless features and that's because they were mainly very useless unless you had a very very dark room as they were not bright enough to be usable. The original Galaxy Beam for instance was a fun idea but it was so dim that in every somewhat realistic scenario um, it would be impossible to see what the projector was showing. On the Tank 2 on the other hand while it was better than the Galaxy Beam it was still quite dark at between 30 to 40 lumens and on my prototype version at least um, it didn't have many settings 
On the Tank 3 though, while the resolution has actually been decreased from 720p to 480p, it actually looks sharper to me and that's probably because you can set the uh, focus manually. And um, however, for the first time on any projector on a phone, the projector is actually usable. So while on the Tank 2 the projector was around 30 to 40 lumens in brightness, on the new phone it is around 100 and honestly it looks pretty great. Of course the room still has to be reasonably dark to see it well but in most reasonably dark situations you'll be able to uh, achieve a fairly decent result and of course you even have the manual focus wheel on the side which is a very nice addition and when coupled with the very loud speaker I would say that this is perfect for watching a movie a TV show or even playing games um, in the dark you can connect a Bluetooth controller and you can actually use this like a Nintendo switch with a massive screen on the wall of your tent or something you might also have noticed the fans on the side here and that's the reason why the new one can be so much brighter than the old because it's got active cooling to keep these temperatures sane and uh, while they can get pretty loud I'm pretty happy to take the additional brightness over having silence. I do kind of wish though that there was an inbuilt kickstand so that you can angle it properly without having to um, rest it on random I don't know the tank phones for instance but uh, maybe save that for the next version, yeah. So in conclusion, should you get the Tank 3 phone? Well, uh, for most people, absolutely not, because this phone is just insane. For most people, the week's worth of battery life is not worth a compromise of something that barely fits into the largest of pockets. And it's not worth something that's three centimeters thick and that's virtually impossible to use in one hand. But however, if any of the insane features like the battery life, like the camp light, like the night vision camera, and of course the projector speaks to you then yes of course this phone is an absolute must buy because you cannot get this combination of features anywhere else this is basically a tank phone perfected the first version was too slow the second version while was the best size it was still underpowered the third one didn't have a projector and although the mini was adorable I don't think that you can call it a proper tank phone the tank 3 phone is fast it's mostly bug free and has an incredible projector so yeah I would say that you should buy it if you're interested. I've got a link to the pre-sale in my bio. If you like videos like this one, please like and subscribe as well. Comment too if you've got any questions. And this is also the final video that I'm going to film in this studio for a while as I'm moving to the UK for the next six months or so. So expect to see something different in the next video. And I would also like to thank my brother Dennis who's been helping me with all of these videos. And until next time, from the other side of the world, toodaloo.